Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 24th of February. US President Trump First Lady arrive in India to colorful welcome. Pakistan closes border with Iran over coronavirus outbreak. And Sri Lanka sets up task force to expedite probe into Easter attacks. Now for all the details, US President Donald Trump along with First Lady arrived in India by landing in Western Ahmedabad city on Monday aimed at strengthening ties between the world's biggest democracies. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi welcomed President Trump kick-starting the two-day tour which included visiting Sabarmati Ashram followed by a grand roadshow and the Namaste Trump event in Motera Stadium. U.S. President Donald Trump landed on Monday in the western Indian city of Ahmedabad to a traditional Indian welcome at the start of his two-day trip aimed at bolstering ties. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi greeted Trump and First Lady Melania at the airport as they stepped off Air Force One. Folk dancers carrying colorful umbrellas dance alongside the red carpet as drummers, trumpeters and other musicians performed on the airport grounds to welcome Trump and the U.S. delegation. President Trump visited Sabarmati Ashram, the former residence of independence hero Mahatma Gandhi. Trump and Prime Minister Modi later jointly addressed tens of thousands of people packed Motera Stadium at Namaste Trump event. The Namaste Trump rally was a larger version of the Howdy Modi rally that Trump and Modi jointly appeared in Houston last year. Prime Minister Modi welcomed U.S. President Trump and his family at the Motera Stadium. अपने परिवार के साथ यहां आना भारत अमेरिका रिश्तों को एक परिवार जैसी मिठास और घनिष्ठता की पहचान दे रहा है The bohemia between the two leaders was displayed once again when Modi hugged Trump at the stadium Trump addressed the crowd and talked about India US relations trade and defense deals among others and i am pleased to announce that tomorrow our representatives will sign deals to sell over three billion dollars in the absolute finest state-of-the-art military helicopters and other equipment to the indian armed forces later president trump and first lady melania reached northern agra city for the scheduled visit to taj mahal one of the seven wonders of the world Pakistan on Sunday closed its border with Iran, stopping movement of people as reports of the outbreak of coronavirus in Iran spread. At least eight people have died in Iran, the highest death toll from coronavirus outside of China, where it originated. Pakistan on Sunday closed its Taftan border with Iran, stopping movement of people as reports of the outbreak of coronavirus in Iran spread. A large number of pilgrims visit Iran from Pakistan via the Taftan border in Balochistan province, crossing on a daily basis. Authorities said they have sealed the border, increased patrolling and introduced screening procedures in a bid to ensure the infection does not spread to the area. However, flights have not been suspended to and from Iran, which has reported 43 cases of coronavirus, an official said. किसी भी बॉर्डर किसी भी क्रॉसिंग पॉइंट कोई शख्स यहां से जाएगा ही और दूसरी ने डिसीजन बल्कि क्लियर है कि वहां से जो आएगा फिर क्वारंटाइन दिस केम अ डे आफ्टर द चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफ बलूचिस्तान अनाउंस्ड दैट अ स्टेट ऑफ इमरजेंसी हैड बीन इंपोज्ड इन द प्रोविंस ड्यू टू द आउटब्रेक ऑफ द वायरस इन ईरान Moving on, a massive protest was held on Sunday against the rising incidents of enforced disappearances in parts of Sindh province of Pakistan. The protesters raised pro-freedom slogans as they blamed the Pakistani security forces for using enforced disappearances as a tool to silence voice and struggle of Sindhi people. 
A massive protest was held outside the Karachi Press Club on Sunday against the rising incidents of enforced disappearances in parts of Sindh province of Pakistan. Held under the banner of Sindh Network, the protesters raised pro-freedom slogans and demanded release of hundreds of Sindhi political activists languishing in detention centers. The purpose of the demonstration was to raise the heinous practices of enforced disappearance and extrajudicial killings perpetrated by Pakistani security agencies to muzzle dissenting voices in Sindh. Sindhi activists have long been requesting the international community to take notice of violence against their peaceful struggle. They blame innocent Sindhi people are being subjected to atrocities by Pakistani forces for raising their voices. In news from Afghanistan, Afghans have emphasized on a lasting peace and ceasefire following the beginning of a seven-day period of reduced violence in the country between Afghan, international and Taliban forces on February 22nd. According to officials, the US and the Taliban will sign an agreement on February 29th at the end of the planned week-long reduction in violence in Afghanistan. Residents of Afghan capital Kabul have emphasized on a lasting peace and ceasefire following the beginning of a seven-day period of reduced violence in the country between Afghan, international and Taliban forces on February 22. According to U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, the U.S.-Taliban agreement is expected to move forward and the U.S. is preparing for the signing to take place on February 29. Taliban spokesman Zabihullah Mujahid said both sides will invite senior representatives to take part in the peace deal signing ceremony. Previous attempts at negotiating peace agreements have been scuttled by Taliban attacks on international forces, most recently in December last year, when an attack on a U.S. military base put talks on hold. U.S. and Taliban negotiators have been meeting in Doha since 2018, even though fighting has raged in Afghanistan and thousands of civilians and combatants have been killed as the insurgents have expanded territory under their control. The agreement could represent a chance for peace and pull out of U.S. troops that have been in the country since U.S.-led forces ousted by hardline Islamist Taliban from power in 2001. In news from Sri Lanka, the Sri Lankan government has set up a six-member task force to expedite the ongoing probe into the 2019 Easter Sunday terror attacks that claimed over 250 lives in the island nation. The Sri Lankan government has set up a six-member task force to expedite the ongoing probe into the 2019 Easter Sunday terror attacks on churches and hotels that claimed over 250 lives. The task force was set up following a directive by President Gotabaya Rajapaksa to ensure speedy investigations into the attacks that took place in Colombo, Nigombo and Batikoloa. Established by the Defence Ministry and headed by the Chief of National Intelligence, Major General Jagat Alves, the task force has been instructed to submit weekly reports to Defence Secretary Major General Retired Kamal Gunaratne, reports suggest. Local media quoted Defence Secretary Gunaratne saying that the CID investigation into the attacks was not conducted in an effective way during the last regime. The development comes after the Archbishop of Colombo, Cardinal Malcolm Ranjit, said last week that the island nation's Catholic community was dissatisfied with the investigations being carried out. Though Islamic State claimed the attacks, Sri Lankan government blamed local Islamist extremist group National Tohi Jamaat for the bombings. Women and men from all walks of life pay tribute to Bangladesh's heroes who laid down their lives on February 21, 1952 to establish Bangla as a state language. The day is observed across the world as International Mother Language Day. Residents in the Bangladeshi capital Dhaka last Friday 
paid tribute to the country's language movement activist who sacrificed lives on the day in 1952 to establish Bangla as a state language. The entire Shahid Minar, a solemn and iconic monument in the city, turned into a veritable sea of flowers and were decorated with festoons and banners. Women and men in the traditional style gathered at the central monument to pay tribute to the country's heroes on February 21, which is now also being observed across the world as International Mother Language Day. The United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO, declared February 21 as International Mother Language Day in 1999. On 21st February 2000, the first International Mother Language Day was observed. Indian Railways have found a way to insensitize fitness by harnessing modern technology. Indian Railways has introduced squat and ride machines in a railway station in capital New Delhi to encourage fitness and exercise among people. Indian Railways installed a machine at a station in capital New Delhi this month that gave out free platform tickets to anyone who could perform 30 squats within 3 minutes as an initiative to promote health and fitness. Indian Railway Stations Development Corporation installed the Kiox at Anand Vihar Station, which count the number of reps of the exercise before ejecting the free ticket that gave passengers access to the train platforms but aren't valid for travel. We conceived this machine and we have programmed it in a manner that if you do 30 squats in three minutes, so you will get as an incentive a platform ticket uh, which will be free of cost to you. According to railway authorities, the Squad Kiox is part of the government's fitness scheme called Fit India Movement, which was launched by Prime Minister Narendra Modi last year, an effort to inspire India towards a healthier future. Sir, we have launched this scheme. We have launched this scheme. We have passenger track here. And we have a platform ticket. We have free and health is good. Authorities also installed a health ATM, a massage chair and a generic medical store called Dawa Dost or Medicine Friendly to meet basic medical requirements of the passengers. Meanwhile, a mobile charging kiosk with lockers was also set up at the station where the passengers could safely charge their mobile phones by paying a nominal amount. A three-day dance and music festival to promote Indian art and culture was recently held in Imphal city of India's northeastern Manipur province. Artists from Manipur and other regions of the country participated in the event and showcased their skills in different dance and music forms. A three-day festival showcasing a lure of Indian classical dance and music was held in Imphal city of Manipur province over the past weekend. Dressed in different traditional attires, artists from Manipur and from other regions of the country enthralled the audiences with their skills in dance and music. The event was jointly organized by Government Dance College and North East Zone Cultural Center. Now this is to promote uh, Indian classical dance especially and uh, we are inviting uh, eminent uh, artists from other parts of the country as well as uh, uh, from other countries also. So this is to promote our uh, dance and music. Manipuri dance, which was the main highlight of the festival, is one of the main style of Indian art or classical dances originated in the picturesque province of Manipur in the northeastern corner of India. The dance in Manipur is associated with rituals and traditional festivals. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. U.S. President Trump, first lady, arrive in India to colorful welcome. Pakistan closes border with Iran over coronavirus outbreak. And Sri Lanka sets up task force to expedite probe into Easter attacks. Now, our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsLine.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsLine and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsLine. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.